In this video, we have Purple Pete, C-15 powered truck that drove across the country to have me troubleshoot some low power complaints. By the time I got here though, found out it had some other problems. Whoa. What could those other problems be? Well, you'll just have to watch the video, find out for yourself. Hey guys, Josh with the Deep Channel, and we have got a good one for you today, folks. So we've got a big old purple Peter build that is pushing coolant out of the hood, pushing coolant out of the engine, pushing coolant out of the exhaust, and other places. What's going on with it? Well, let's find out. So we got my big old orange snap-on toolbox over here, but it's on the equipment side. I was actually working on this 420 backhoe. Working a lot of equipment lately, actually, and it had some def problems. What happened? Well, the def injector failed, and it pushed def into the wiring harness, and this little def injector costs over $900, so who doesn't love def? So it's like playing industrial Tetris, having this large toolbox as like my cart. And you can see our shop is about two thirds equipment, one third truck, which makes sense because we've got about twice as many equipment mechanics as we do truck mechanics. So now that we're in place, I'm gonna look this truck over. Now he drove up and he's a subscriber and his truck, he said had poor fuel economy and had low power ever since he put a cat short block in it. Um, and it was not put together, the engine was not put together by cat it's put together by an independent shop. But you can see there's coolant all over the place. And he also runs cat filters. So good for him. And basically, he's just not happy with the performance. However, on the way up from across the country, he started pushing coolant. This was something new. Now, what you need to keep in mind is this engine was just running a few minutes before doing this part of the video. He had stayed in it running overnight. It's quite cold up here. I drove it into the shop. So just keep that in mind. And he was running green coolant, so that's why it looks like there's green stuff all over his truck. So on the exhaust side here, it's a 6NZ single turbo. And a little bit of moisture coming out of the exhaust there. Not a good sign, folks, obviously. Checking uh, these drips look like oil, but if you zoom in on them, just got to get the right lighting. Yeah, that's green. So he's got coolant coming out of the exhaust. Really not a good sign. Now, this was a cat short block, like I said. Now, the last couple cat short blocks I've seen, at least the C15 ones. Now, this oil leak, that is not cat's fault. That was obviously not put together on the short block. But the oil gallery plugs I've noticed on the last three I've looked at have been not very tight. So I bet these aren't tight either because you can see they're actually seeping some oil. And these are actually 5 16 square drive. I wish they were 3 8 but no, they're 5 16 So let's see how loose they are. Pretty loose. Yeah, that one we got almost a full turn of. And I'm not really hanging off the ratchet here. Like, it was pretty loose. They ended up all being pretty much that loose. So always check those. Seems like Cat can put an edge together fine, but doesn't know how to tighten those for some reason. Coolant, you can see is clean. It's pretty low though. It's hard to tell from the video there, but we're good. I'd say about five inches below the top there. So this is the true bottle test that John Goldsmith was telling me about. And I'm a, I want to do it on this engine because pretty sure we got some compression getting into the cooling system. So what we need is a bucket of water, one bottle, pint bottle of water and a hose. What we're gonna do is start it and then see how long it takes to push all the water out of the small water bottle upside down in the big water bottle. Now, I've never done this test before. I've always done the older style bottle test, which is apparently inaccurate. Now, our, our company policy, folks, is to honk the horn before starting a vehicle. No horn. Honk. Can't do that on this one. Whoa, it's locked up. It's locked up. So it is literally locked up, hydro locked. The very same time, I've not started this vehicle actually. He had started it 
I looked it over, we brought it into the shop. And you can see I started, he said just pull the head right away. So it was around 10 a.m. at this point. I said I'm gonna try and have the head off same day and try to get an answer for you same day. So I needed to hustle. You can see all those red caps. I've been trying to be more diligent about capping everything off. Um, I'm always trying to improve on how I do a rebuild or how I do a repair, especially one that I've done several times like this. And I mean, not exactly hydrolocked, but you know, we're doing a C15 teardown, lots of those. Now, normally I break these bolts loose by hand, but like I said, I'm trying to hustle on this. So I'm using my air tools to get these Jake and rocker arm assemblies off. And this engine did not have a ton of miles on it since it had been put together. And so luckily, at least many of the items were easy to come apart. We'll see in a, a little while later, not all of them were though. And some of that was due to assembler error, as I would say. So like I said, we're just getting these jakes off. So first I wanna try and figure out which cylinder is causing it to be hydrolocked. Now, why do I think it's hydrolocked and not just seized? Well, we've got coolant coming out of the exhaust. That means coolant's getting into the cylinders most likely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all the injectors and see if I can see coolant in any of the cylinders. Obviously when you pull the injectors, you're gonna get fuel in the cylinders, but you should never have coolant in the cylinders from pulling injectors. So we're gonna pull them all out and then see. Now my guess is, or I should say was, number four cylinder. I don't know why that is. It's probably because the last two C15s I've torn apart had problems around number four head gasket. Uh, that might just be a coincidence, but that's what I, that was my guess. Obviously I am narrating this video after the fact, so I know which owner, but I don't want to ruin it for you guys. Now you may think this was scripted or something like, how is it that I didn't know it was hydrolux? I literally was videoing it to do the bottle test because I really wanted to get uh, the first time doing that bucket style bottle test and it literally was just hydrolocked that very time cranking it. So if he had himself gone and turned it off again, it would not have started for him. So kind of lucky in that case. So we know which one it is. Little editor note here. YouTube has now started requiring license uh, tags on all their music. So I took all the music out of the destruction of the week and the intro and the outro. Even though I was using copyright free music folks, I'm not gonna use any more music, so let's get to some destruction of the week. I've actually got two separate destruction of the weeks. This one is from Scott. This is out of a Cummins in a motorhome. And that's a whole bunch of metal in that gear train, folks. And yep, it stripped all the teeth off of this one gear here, which of course sent metal through all throughout the system. Bad day for this engine. Our next one is from David, and you might be wondering what the heck kind of Area 51 thing is he holding? Well, that's a small piston out of an APU, out of a truck. You can actually see the oil control ring on the bottom now, the, uh, the piston rings on top kind of smashed out. Now this next picture, this is the number two piston, but that is the intake valve out of number one. How the heck that valve got upside down into number two, I have no idea. He sent me the pictures though and he said that's what happened. Pretty interesting, thank you both for sending those pictures. Let's get back to work. So I'd, we had just pulled the injectors there. You know, my voice is a little off today, folks. Um, sorry about that, I feel fine, but sounds weird. So this is number one cylinder. We're, since his, he has co green coolant, we're looking for green in any of these injector bores. Number two there actually looks dry. And you might see some moisture in all of them. That's because there's going to be a little bit of fuel that dumps in from the injectors. So number four, remember we're looking for green. Uh, yeah, looks like we got some green right there. Look right in the middle of that injector bore, folks. You'll see the greenish tinge. That means there's coolant in that cylinder and that means that is most likely where our problem is. Now the head has to come off regardless, but I really like to identify as I disassemble. So here's something I do not like finding. The adapter for the cam gear, someone used Loctite on it and it kind of sticks to the cam gear. Also, they put silicone all over the peanut cover and the seal adapter plate. Stop putting silicone on our rings, folks. Like, there is no reason to use silicone here. All it does is make that ring really hard to get off and makes a mess. So, 
Getting our head bolts out of here. Now the head bolts can actually tell you things about the engine if you look at them as they come apart. These were fairly dry. I saw really no molybdenum paste used on these. Maybe they used engine oil or something, but they may have put them in dry. Now the ones between five and six, which are the ones on the right here, as you can see, are covered in gunk, which definitely makes me think we have a head gasket failure here because if it was a cracked head and the head gasket was fine, there's really no way for gunk to get on those head bolts considering all the other ones are dry. Gonna be using our shop crane here. Now here's something that I always warn apprentices about is don't trust these. Those cat lifting brackets for the engine break. I've seen them break a lot. Don't trust them or if you are gonna use them, inspect them carefully, please. So heads off here. This is number five cylinder. We're looking from the exhaust side, that's why. Uh, it looks like it's number two, but it's actually number five. And you can see there's green, and there's also green in six. That's probably from when we picked the head, but didn't see any damage to the liner there. We're gonna have to clean it up and see what the heck's going on here. So pretty much blown head gasket or cracked head is gonna be most likely our cause here. And you can see the head gasket there. And it is not in the greatest of shape. We're gonna take a look at the head though. So this is number five, over number five. So we got our valves. Now C15s a lot of times will crack between the intake valves. Right there, yep. That's actually quite common and not always a problem. Actually some of the other cylinders on the cylinder had had that crack and they didn't have coolant in them. So more than likely it is the head gasket that is the cause of failure here. That is number four, it's cracked but we're not gonna focus on that. We're gonna focus on this, see? Bad head gasket. Now the head gasket being bad on a C15, people were like, oh, I hope it's a head gasket. No, you don't, because a bad head gasket means there's something wrong with the liner height generally. Now this being a not very high mileage cat short block, that's really weird to have a head gasket failure like that. I'm very interested to find out what the liner protrusion is. Now, like I said, this was on a Friday. I'm gonna have to do the liner protrusion on Monday. This was towards the end of the day that we got the head off. You can also see number four here was passing carbon, it looks like, discolored. It's the same three, there's some carbon there. Something's going on here that should not be going on. All right, we'll have to get back to this in the next episode. I will leave you with this. I would like to say thank you to Ricky, Brandon, Boris, and Jeff for sending donations to the channel this week. If you'd like to contact me or send a donation, it's adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal. Thanks for watching.